the Force is female. This is Kathleen Kennedy's big claim to try and get you to value female characters over male characters, most notably Rey, the bestest ever. But how many well-written female characters did Kennedy purge in her relegation of the expanded universe to simple legends? This series will review some of the greatest female characters from the expanded universe, who proved to all little girls out there that they can actually stand tall with the big boys, if they work hard, rather than simply ordering all the big boys to bow down and worship them. I will start off with most people's favorite female character from the expanded universe, Mara Jade Skywalker. The basic description you often hear is, she is Luke Skywalker's wife, but she is much more than that. In fact, their relationship was incredibly rocky at first. Even after she stopped wanting to kill him, it took several years for them to realize that they were meant to be together. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let us start off at the beginning. Now, I have my own theories as to Mara Jade's parentage, but I will put that aside for now. All we know of her early history is that she was born just before the end of the Clone Wars, and at some point in her early life, the Emperor, or agents of the Empire, discovered that she was Force-sensitive and took her away from her parents. According to Mera herself, she cannot remember much about her parents, but got the feeling they were not happy about the decision, but had no choice. The Empire did this for a lot of kids, who the Jedi were planning to induct into their order before the Jedi Order was Order 66 most of these children were conscripted into the Inquisitorius to become Inquisitors. With Mara, however, the Emperor arranged for something different, gave her personal training, and when asked about his plans for her, Palpatine said that she was simply an experiment. From what I gather, she was similar to his various other agents, such as Inquisitors or Dark Side Adepts, but treated slightly differently. While Mera was trained in the use of several weapons, including lightsabers, blasters, slug throwers, modern bullet-type guns, Lavanrock, wrist-mounted disc blade launchers, favored by the ancient Sith, as well as several force techniques such as levitation and telepathy. Telepathy was one of her most notable skills. In fact, she was able to forge a direct connection with Palpatine himself and report to him directly through their telepathic contact. The more esoteric principles of Sith and Dark Jedi, however, were never taught to her. It has been theorized that Palpatine's experiment with Mara was to see if he could raise a Force-sensitive agent who was loyal to the principles of order that the Empire espoused without suffering from any of the detriments of selfishness and greed that were so ingrained into Sith culture. After all, the Empire was a Sith creation. As she grew and trained, her true abilities were kept secret from all those around her. She was passed off as just a bit of eye candy around the Imperial Palace. This allowed her to take advantage of people who lowered their guards around her. Palpatine sent her out on missions to root out corruption against the Empire itself. As the Empire was a Sith creation, it was bound to have some unsavory elements fermenting within it. Even a pig that wallows in mud all day can get infected if the owner doesn't regularly sweep for parasites. Careful to keep Mara away from his truly evil plans, such as genocide and slavery, Palpatine sent Mara out to take care of any Imperial employees who were corrupt either skimming some money off the top, or selling guns to insurgents. She was given secret codes and title of Emperor's Hand. With these, Mera had the authority to conscript any Imperial forces as she saw fit to complete her mission. Best examples of some of her exploits are detailed in the expanded universe novel Allegiance. After Empire Strikes Back, Palpatine learned of Vader's ambitions to take Luke as an apprentice, and to kill Palpatine and rule the Empire together. As such, Palpatine sent Mera on a secret mission, kill Luke Skywalker. To this end, she posed as a dancer in Jabba's palace. If you listen to the radio drama of Return of the Jedi, you can catch a brief conversation between Mara and 3PO. Mara managed to witness Luke's defeat of the Rancor and begged Jabba to let her come on the barge. Jabba, who had been suspicious of Mara's background, declined her offer to accompany him. And when Mara tried to use the Force in an attempt to persuade him, that sealed the deal. Jabba flat out refused, and left her in the palace. A later vision by Luke revealed that if Mara had been allowed to accompany Jabba, Mara would have been able to keep Luke's lightsaber away from him, and Luke would have died. Mara reported back to Palpatine, who was disappointed, but unbeknownst to her, had changed his mind about Luke. In actuality, Palpatine was planning to replace Vader with Luke. 
Palpatine told her to take a bit of a vacation, and then return to his service at a later date. Of course, soon after, Palpatine was killed, and in his death, he was able to send one final command to Mara through the Force. You will kill Luke Skywalker! With no command codes and no Palpatine to vouch for her, Mara had nothing. She was, at one point, hunted by another Force-sensitive agent of the Empire, Lumaya, who managed to steal her lightsaber. Mara fled from place to place, eking out a meager existence and never staying anywhere too long, until she linked up with the fairly stable employment in the smuggling-slash-information organization of Talon Card. Spending several months with Card, Mara refuses to tell him much about her past, and he doesn't tend to ask. Eventually, through hard work, Card sees the potential in her and promotes her to second-in-command. There are several reasons why she may have stayed with Card, he and his crew were the first group to respect her privacy. But I get the feeling that a large portion of the reason she stayed was the location of their base, Merkur. Merkur is a planet that is home to a unique species that are on two sides of an interesting evolutionary war to harness the Force. While the Predator species can use the Force to find prey, the Prey species can project Force-negative bubbles to hide themselves. As such, the entire planet completely cancels out a person's force abilities. This may seem bad for most people who like using force powers, but the constant accusatory orders of YOU WILL KILL LUKE SKYWALKER have been starting to get to Mera, especially since, right now, Luke is far too protected by the New Republic to kill him at the moment. But, eventually, a chance encounter brings Mara face to face with her target. Luke Skywalker, trapped in deep space after a hyperdrive malfunction from evading an Imperial Star Destroyer, has desperately called out into the Force for help. And who should receive this call? But Mara herself. With Mara's guidance, Card rescues slash captures Luke, who had a bounty on his head, and takes him to Merkur. Card considers turning Luke over to the Empire, but as he is an information broker first, he wishes to find out just why the Empire is so interested in having Luke alive. Luke eventually escapes in an unfamiliar skip-ray blast boat, and Mara, who was just sneaking over to kill him herself, is forced to pursue. Luke's force blindness causes them both to crash, and they have to hike back, leading to a recurring plot device of long hikes in which characters are given time to talk. In this first hike, Luke and Mara alternately have jabs, stony silence, and eventual exposition. It is here that Mara reveals to Luke that she was the Emperor's Hand, and that she is going to kill him someday. The only reason she doesn't kill him right now is because it would cause problems to Card, and she owes him. If it sounds a little Sundari, that's because it is. It's not like I like you or anything, but the baka. They eventually part ways. Mara sticks with Card, who has run afoul of the Empire. The Empire eventually uses Mara's prior connections to capture Card. Mara here learns that she was not the only Emperor's Hand, and that Palpatine arranged for several of the Hands to assume that they were the only one. In fact, the Imperial Agent Lumaya, who stole her lightsaber, was one such Hand. Mara, conflicted with her prior loyalty to Palpatine, and disillusioned by the lack of honor the Empire has under its current leadership, decides to break in and save Card. But to do so, she will need help from the very man she is destined to kill. Despite her ship getting smashed up by rocks hurled by a mad Dark Jedi, Mara crash lands and helps break Luke free from the Dark Jedi's influence. Mara wants to kill the unconscious Dark Jedi, but Luke stops her, believing that he could still be redeemed. Mara expects Luke to demand some kind of quid pro quo for helping to rescue Card, but Luke easily agrees. When people need help, a Jedi steps forward. They break in and rescue Card. Glazing over some of the details, well, a lot of the details, Mara participates in a massive space battle and nearly dies, but Luke is able to sense her and save her life. She spends the next few months in a coma on Coruscant, and when she wakes, is shocked to find that the Empire has started their own clone army, one that can grow clones to full maturity in a matter of weeks. She decides to help Luke and his friends to locate the Emperor's old stronghold, where she rightly suspects the cloning factory is. 
Due to an interesting species of wildlife that goes nuts whenever a repulsor lift is around, they are forced to have another exposition-heavy hike. It is here that Mara learns that not only is Luke Darth Vader's son, but also that it was Vader who killed the Emperor. Mara has been having nightmares of Vader and Luke working together to slaughter Palpatine, but Luke tells her that after his first swing, he never attacked the Emperor again, that he threw his lightsaber aside, and that Vader had only killed Palpatine to save Luke. While she doesn't believe him at first, Luke's words still ring true. Once they get to the fortress, they have to face the same mad dark Jedi from before, giving Mara an I told you so moment. Along with this mad Jedi, they have to face a clone of Luke Skywalker, cloned from the hand that he lost on Bespin, and wielding the very lightsaber he lost there as well. Mara is able to slay the clone, and thus, through a technicality, silence the order in her mind to kill Luke Skywalker. The mad Jedi then begins raining stones and gravel down on everyone, but only Mara is smart enough to get out of the pile by slashing little holes in the ground to let the gravel spill away from her. Despite being completely blinded by the sandstorm, Mara uses her particular specialty in the Force to receive instructions from Leia, who is nearby and can see, in order to close in on the Dark Jedi and kill him. After the conflict is over, Luke bequeaths his father's old lightsaber to Mara, as the Force seems to tell him that she should have it. They part as friends, and Mara continues on her life, mostly independent of Luke. The years here... I don't remember that much of. Palpatine returns in a brief but destructive fashion, but Mara is able to avoid him. Mara visits Luke's new Jedi Academy in order to train occasionally, but doesn't stay long. She saves one of his students from the spirit of an ancient Sith Lord, and helps another one recover after being corrupted by the dark side. There were rumors of a relationship between her and Lando Calrissian, but that was simply misinformation to cover up an investigation they were conducting together. Meanwhile, Luke has several random girlfriends, such as my girlfriend the spaceship, but that's a discussion for a whole nother day. About ten years later, a new interstellar political conflict arises, and Mara sets off to investigate a mysterious alien race with advanced technology, only to get herself lost on an uncharted planet. Card, who was forced to leave Mara on that world, seeks out Luke, who, combined with Card's plea, as well as visions of Mara dying, sets off to save her. We yet again have some hiking exposition, though this time in a pitch black cave. During this time, Mara calls out Luke for a lot of the poor choices he's made throughout his life, such as serving the Palpatine clone, getting several of his students killed, and most recently, declaring himself Jedi Master. Eventually, they find out that the aliens they're tracking down are actually a part of an organization known as the Empire of the Hand, a massive military and intelligence network that was started by the most intelligent Imperial Grand Admiral ever. Mara has the opportunity here to join with them and lead this Empire of the Hand, as well as the prior Empire, in order to rule the galaxy. However, after spending so much time out in the galaxy and seeing firsthand what the Empire was doing to all the little people, she makes the painful choice to sever her connection with the Empire forever, by remote piloting her ship to crash into the facility. Shortly after, the Imperial Remnant makes peace with the New Republic, and the Empire of the Hand fades back into obscurity in order to face threats from outside the galaxy. Through their time together, Luke and Mara realize that they are meant to be together, and get married. Look at that. Just about 14 minutes in, and only now is she Luke Skywalker's wife. Mara Jade is so much more than just that. Soon after their honeymoon, they go off on an adventure together to investigate the lost outbound flight, as is detailed in the book Survivor Quest. And now, we go into the New Jedi Order series. Mara becomes the sole survivor of a mysterious illness, later revealed to be an alien bioweapon. Not only is she able to f use the Force to fight off an alien bioweapon that killed everyone else, while doing this, she faced down the vanguard of an extragalactic invasion by a race known as the Vong, and killed one of their warriors in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Throughout this invasion, she manages to continue fighting the Vong and their bioengineered poison. As well as, as well as tutor several students, including Jaina and Anakin Solo. I still recall one of her best lessons. 
She chastised Anakin Solo for using the Force to pull himself up a chair. The lesson was that you cannot always rely on the Force, or else your other traits such as muscles and mind could atrophy. Here we see that she is carrying her lessons from her time on Merkur and teaching them to the younger generation. Mera eventually becomes pregnant with Luke's son, and though she receives a temporary cure to her illness, Mera has to use all of her Force powers to keep the illness at bay and protect her child from it. Through the combined efforts of herself, Luke, and even her infant child, she is able to vanquish the illness once and for all, and give birth to little baby Ben Skywalker. Mera continues to fight the Vong, and protect her son until the Vong are finally routed. Shortly after the Vong invasion, she is forced to come to terms with her past employment with Palpatine, when a hive-minded race of bug aliens who remembers her sins invades, and one of these aliens tries to corrupt little toddler Ben. These bugs try to sow doubt in Luke's mind, implying that it was Mara who killed Luke's mother under orders from Palpatine. But Luke trusts the woman he loves, and is able to fight past his doubt. Several years later, another conflict starts to brew, orchestrated by Mara's former rival in both professional and romantic life, Shira Bree, aka Sith Lady Lumaya. Luke and Mara face her down, though the Sith Lady escapes by casting the strands of her light whip at innocent bystanders and forcing Mara and Luke to save them. Upon hearing that her son Ben has been manipulated and psychologically tortured by Sith Lord Darth Kaidus, Mara takes up her old assassination skills for a final confrontation with the man who dared to harm her boy. Unfortunately, this is how her story ends. She puts up an intensely good fight, and almost kills him. She would have, if not for a single toxic dart he managed to jab her with. Even in death, Mara still held on, managing to delay her body from becoming one with the Force, until the man who killed her showed up at her funeral. Only then did she vanish, thus giving a clue to the identity of her murderer, Jason Solo. She appears later as a ghost when Luke visits her in the spirit world, and Mara does her best to guide Luke with regard to his latest foe, Abeloth. A more in-depth story for another day. And that is the full story of Mara Jade Skywalker. From kidnapped conscripti, to imperial assassin, to homeless wanderer, to smuggler and information broker, to beloved wife, mother, and Jedi master. Mara Jade Skywalker. No matter who tries to kill you, be it Darth Kaidus or Kathleen Kennedy, you will always be remembered. That concludes this episode of Strong Star Wars Women, a continuing series in which I show that true Star Wars fans are perfectly fine with strong female characters, provided that they are well written. Please like, subscribe, and review, and I will be releasing the next episode in a couple of weeks. Johnny Boy, signing off.